So good afternoon, everybody. And uh, uh, we'd like to welcome you on behalf of uh, Francesco Pignatelli, so the, the program manager and the ELISA action leader at Joint Research Center, as well uh, on behalf of Lorena Hernandez, project officer at, at Joint Research Center, and myself, uh, Simon Vrecher, consultant at Joint Research Center, who will together ho ho hosting together this webinar today uh, with the title Location Intelligence, uh, Technology Trends, and case studies in digital government, which is being actually the part of the so-called location intelligence for cities and regions event pack that uh, we are preparing in September and October. Uh, so as on the next slide, uh, let's just uh, uh, take a few words about uh, uh, ELISE for those uh, that uh, don't know maybe. So ELISE stands for European Location Interoper Interoperability Solutions for e-government. And is as such as an, as an action is a part of the ISA Square program, uh, which is uh, uh, one uh, the U European interoperability program aiming uh, to provide uh, cross border and uh, cross sector interoper interoperability solutions for public administrations, citizens, and businesses. So, under this uh, program, there are 54 different actions tackling uh, the inter different interoperability issues from different angles. And uh, uh, ELISE is uh, the only one actually uh, uh, focusing on the location dimension uh, of the interoperability and as a driver for enabling the digital uh, government uh, transformation. Um, so uh, as seen on the next slide, uh, within the context of uh, ELISE, knowledge transfer activities. We are uh, organizing periodically several webinars um, whose uh, aim uh, are to engage in some agile way, agile way uh, with the topics uh, relevant for the digital transformation. And uh, on the other side, uh, also uh, the, 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 the purpose is also to uh, share and present the results of ELISA activities. So for more information on the webinars we are organizing so far, we've been organizing so far together with their presentations and recordings, you're kindly invited to visit uh, ELISA join up page. Uh, so, but today, uh, so uh, as we can see on the next slide, uh, so the, uh, we prepared, uh, uh, as mentioned before, uh, special location intelligence for regions and cities event pack. So uh, for the reason that local and regional um, uh, administration and uh, governments play important role, so not only in implementing cohesion policy through different instruments of European Union, but also deliver efficient services to, uh, to businesses and citizens, uh, supporting their different life situation and events and performing effective and um, sustainable decision making, uh, contributing, improving the quality of their life. So in these processes, uh, interoperable location data and services underpinned by location intelligence play a very important role, as uh, we will see also today. So therefore, under uh, our LISA action, we prepared a series of events dedicated to location intelligence supporting cities and regions. Started actually last week, some of, there were, uh, some of you were there already, with a webinar presenting the state of art and the future perspective of the use of location data. Uh, and technologies uh, by uh, local and regional governments and their role towards the, let's say, smart transformation. Today, uh, we are continuing this story by sharing insights uh, to, the, uh, to the key concept and definitions relating location intelligence, geo-artificial intelligence, digital twins of government, and explaining the trends in digital government technology. Um, the, the, uh, everything will be also supported by case studies from the cities of Helsinki and Guimaraes. Uh, we will conclude with our, uh, let's say, cities and regions back on 14th of October at 11.30 during the 18th European Week of Regions and Cities with a participatory lab on location intelligence for cities and regions. In, in this uh, participatory lab, uh, we'll try to show the, showcase the opportunities uh, the use of location intelligence can offer to regional and to city administrations through two different stories, 
uh, one of these those stories will be on the location intelligence in uh, energy efficiency another uh, will be on data ecosystems uh, at the end uh, of uh, today's webinars uh, we will share uh, also the further details for the how you can uh, uh, register for for uh, for the event um, as uh, on the next slide uh, uh, so just to present who, who who we have today with us so it's uh, Clementine Valayer from Gartner uh, who will uh, share with us the details on technology landscape and trends of location intelligence and in her company we have also two guests uh, Jarmo Sumisto from city of Helsinki and uh, Ricardo Vitorino from Ubiware who will be presenting us uh, two case studies one uh, from city of Helsinki and another one from city of Guimaraes uh, but uh, before giving the floor um, to to um, to Clementine, I would invite you uh, to the to the poll. So on your screen uh, is appearing a poll in which uh, you are asking a bit about uh, where are you coming from, so your affiliation. So maybe we spend uh, 20 seconds on that to, to see a bit the, uh, the landscape of our um, participants today, which will be, I think, good input as well for uh, our presenters of today. Uh, so, okay, thank you for, for voting. Uh, so the results, uh, so as we can see, the majority of you are coming from the National Public Administration, uh, then Academia and Research, uh, and so on. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your answers and uh, I give the floor now to Clementine. Please, Clementine. Thank you very much. Um... Simon, for this introduction, and uh, it's great to have everyone um, in this session uh, representing uh, different profiles. Um, the aim today, as uh, Simon described this, is to demystify location intelligence by describing technology trends. Um, and by illustrating with very concrete cases, um, 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 for the Helsinki digital twin city models and an urban platform for the city of Guimaraes. And for those two case studies, we are accompanied by the, those who have actually implemented the project. So feel free, of course, to ask uh, very uh, concrete questions either in the chat or at the end of our session in QA. Okay, now uh, I will now talk about in the next slide. Um, if you can continue and bring up um, the definition of location intelligence. Um, so you will recognize here um, the representative view of digital platforms, according to Gartner. And location intelligence is uh, pictured at the center of these digital platforms that uh, bring together ecosystems, um, customers or citizens, IT systems, but also uh, um, elements from the Internet of Things. And this location intelligence is really, uh, let's say, adding value to these digital platforms. Um, it is defined as the process of deriving meaningful insight from geospatial data relationships. So the term of insight is really important here. Next slide, please. Um, here we have for the record uh, the definitions uh, that are relevant in the context of this study, uh, but I will uh, illustrate them uh, in the following slides. Um, next one. So if you click a bit more, uh, Ricardo, you will uh, show some, some of the text on the right-hand side of this slide. What we're seeing here uh, is actually uh, the typical Gartner hype cycle. And this one is actually uh, focusing on digital government technologies. Uh, for those who are uh, not familiar with this type of, uh, of, of uh, market research, um, so Gartner publishes hype cycles in various domains. Um, and it's a way for their clients to track innovation and maturity and also uh, future potential. So it characterizes typically the progression of innovation from over enthusiasm, which is the hype, um, to a period of disillusionment and then to an eventual understanding of the innovation's relevance and role in the market. So with this slide, we see uh, on the digital government technologies patterns uh, that the outdoor location intelligence uh, is reaching the plateau of productivity in less than two years. 
meaning that uh, this uh, technology and its usage is maturing very fast. But we also see that digital platforms will reach the plateau in between two and five years of, of market maturity. And same for uh, predictive analytics. Internet of Things platforms are also highly relevant now in digital government technologies, though uh, they will be mature in five to 10 years only. Um, as all these technologies are actually supporting the development of digital twins of governments that we actually notice um, at the base of the, uh, of the curve on the left, starting to go up the height. Um, and uh, let me just briefly explain what a digital twin of government is. It's a virtual representation of government and partner assets, people and operations that provide real-time or near real-time analysis capabilities. You can also leverage them to automate operations and also to make scenario-based planning, such as forecasting um, or modeling. Um, but for prior prioritizing these emerging in innovations, we must look beyond this hype and assess technology opportunities in terms of their impacts on the organization and ecosystem. And a useful graphical tool that you will see now that we also use to represent this information is what we call the priority matrix. Uh, high priority investments are usually at the top left of the matrix where the innovations will have a high impact and have reached a reasonable level of maturity in a short time. Um, let me lead you through just a few of these transformational technologies um, that will uh, fuel uh, location intelligence. So in less than two years to maturity, of course, cloud computing, which is a style of computing uh, which is um, scalable and elastic. Um, and it is, it is very relevant, of course, for implementing uh, location intelligence because of the potential use of large amounts of data and computing power. Event stream processing is, is computing that's performed on event objects for the purpose of stream data integration. Uh, and it is one, of course, of the key enablers of continuous intelligence, providing a continuous stream of data. Digital government technology platforms are a set of cross-cutting integrated capabilities that coordinate government services across multiple domains, such as citizen experience, ecosystems, internet of things, and IT systems, similar to the digital platform that we use in the introduction. Um, Edge AI is also relevant as it refers to the use of AI techniques embedded in end points of internet of things or embedded in edge devices. So these applications range, of course, from autonomous vehicles to streaming analytics. And the applications that are starting to see uh, increasing adoption uh, are, uh, of Edge AI include, for example, um, video analytics or any other applications that are data intensive. And uh, another one I'd like to mention here before we move on, of course, is the Geo AI which is very relevant uh, in the scope of this seminar. It's the use of machine learning and deep learning techniques with spatial data. So we can see, for example, examples include forecasting uh, near real time uh, traffic um, based on uh, the evolution of a storm. Um, and this will require, of course, uh, a computing a large set of data and a near real time analysis of how to predict let's say the evolution of the storm versus um, how to reroute the traffic. Um, I think what's interesting also, yes, thank you for the, uh, putting the next slide. Uh, the, you, I will pr present three slides where I will illustrate how these different um, toolings are, are implemented. Um, part of the technologies that we mentioned are um, uh, not explicitly mentioned here, but on the matrix we saw elements like the web mapping tools and geocoding services and 3D and 4D mapping. And these are used, of course, very often now in, um, let's say, the management of, of cities, uh, city management, that, that mostly start from a 4D map, 4D, the, the fourth dimension, of course, being the time dimension, uh, and then um, plugging onto that, um, uh, let's say, additional services. In the next slide, we will see another example, which is the one relating to uh, uh, monitoring the agricultural subsidy compliance. Uh, these images are satellite images from the Copernicus um, satellite, 
Um, and the use of um, artificial intelligence and image and video analytics allows to monitor the application of the uh, uh, agricultural subsidy. Next slide. A last illustration, I think it's also re relevant in the scope of digital government services, is how to leverage uh, uh, these type of tools for crime prediction. Um, and they, uh, let's say, they again, they make use of the same web mapping tools and GeoAI. But uh, from here, um, I think I will now uh, move on to uh, leaving the floor to uh, an explanation on the Helsinki Digital Twin City model. But before we do that, we would like to bring up a poll. Um, Ron, maybe you would like to take over at this point. We've lost Simon. Yes, sure. So we have, we have a, a poll uh, actually to uh, uh, with the question, how familiar are you with the technologies relating to the location intelligence? Let's maybe give five seconds before ending the poll. So let's see the results. So most of you is from the group. I have heard of it, but do not know it very well. I think it's also interesting indication for our speaker. So let's continue with uh, Jarmo from uh, city of Helsinki. Please Jarmo, the floor is yours. Uh, yes. Hello. I, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. I, I still have see the poll results here in on my screen, but but we, we hear you, Jarmo. Yeah, you yeah. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon from Helsinki. Yeah. So uh, I, I begin with a dream about forty years ago, as I was a young architect doing city planning, and it was all manual work. So lots of paper, a lot of transparent plastics, and 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 manual col uh, coloring of the plans, and so on. And I, I really dreamed that someday computers will help us in, in this manual work, and so we can do better work, we, we can do better planning, we, we can analyze the, the, the plans during the planning process, not afterwards from, from a scale model like that. Now, yes, 40 years from that dream, we are very close to that point, but we are, we are well, we are, we are close. It doesn't take any more 40 years, but, but it, it takes some time. But even now, we have a great help from, from from technology, from computers, from location intelligence, and 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 and, and so, uh, and uh, and at, at 40 years ago, uh, I didn't even dream that that my full day work is 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 with, with with these models and 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 semantic city models and things like that. But so it is. Yeah. All right. I, I, uh, my presentation is, is about Helsinki, the work we have done in Helsinki and, and uh, digital twin city models. Yeah. Okay. Next, please. Okay, here, here. Yes, in, in Helsinki, we have two production lines of, of, of city models. So Helsinki is, is about 500 square kilometers, the area of, of city of Helsinki. And we have two production lines, two city models covering the whole city. We have the reality mesh model and we have the semantic city GML model. With textures, they, they look about the same. It, it's like from airplane, so, so not, nothing special from that. But, but if we take the textures away from, from those models, you see what's under the bonnet. So what's the technology there? And, and the reality mesh is, is kind of a surface of polygons. Uh, it's, it's quite a polygon porridge for the computer. And, and if you ask the computer, what's, what's, what, what's this? You show the reality mesh. The computer says that it, it's two billion polygons and nothing else. There's no no intelligence in, in, in that mesh. It, it, it's, it's a pretty picture, it, it's, it's a pretty model, it's a visual thing. 
semantic city GML model, according to the standard, semantic city model is 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 uh, something else. You see, th there are different surfaces. It, it's, it's not not, not a polygon board. It's it, it, it's a it's a group of polygons, and and it has a database behind that, and and the, uh, the database knows. Uh, what 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 is this polygon and what is this polygon? If we ask computer showing this semantic city model, what's this? Oh, the computer knows. Oh, this is a city model, and in case of Helsinki, it's a city model of eighty thousand buildings, and and, and those buildings ha have about one million separate uh, semantic surfaces in the database, of which roof surfaces are, are about. 200,000 roof surfaces. And if we ask at the, what, what roots, roof surfaces are, are towards south or west, yes, these, and, and, and can you color them to red so we know where are the good, good parts, to, for example, to place solar panels? Yes, these are this, and the amount of it is like that. So you, you understand that the semantic city model has a more uh, advanced power than, than the reality mesh. So uh, digital cities, digital city models, digital queens of the city are, are not only virtual visual fun or, or pretty pictures. They are also analytical. They are for advanced analyze and simula simulations. So why we have two production lines in Helsinki, it's that why that, 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 that we, we, we get benefits from both of these models. And, and they are not against each other. We see it's both and we need both of those to get most uh, the full scale of benefits from today's technology. Yes, next please. Yes, and in big picture, you see, see this here. You see the reality model, the red one, and the city GML, and, and you understand now why. And, and, and then in, in, the, in the bottom of, the, of, of this infographics, you, you see the um, data sources. Yes, point clouds, oblique images, databases, registers, IFC, beam models, and also a little bit more and more new geodata from satellites, from smartphones, even for, for from cars, which have scanners and so some of it is open data. And then there's the technology to transform then to, to city models. And, and then it's there's, there's the benefits level, the, the uh, green level there. And, and there are hundreds of use cases even today from, from to city models. And, 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 and those use cases are, are for the good of the people. So I, I see the cities work <laughs> with these. Somehow cities should transform the, the data and technology to use cases which promote good life for the people. So it, it's for the good life in sustainable environment. That's, that's the main purpose. Of all, all this work, uh, and, and certainly we are working for that. So, so concrete results, co concrete services, and, and concrete benefits. It, it's something we, we want to have also in Helsinki. We want to be very practical in, in, in those use cases. We want to show show people that that there's there's really power in, in these models and and and. Uh, uh, and they can help for, for the for in, in their everyday life. We have a smart city district in, in, in Helsinki called Kalasatama, and, and, and the, the big vision in, in that smart city area is that, that that with this new technology, with the help of smart technology, you get one hour free time more every day. So it, it's quite 25-7 goal. And yes, there's the data sources and there's the text one. You, you get these presentations afterward. You can read these afterwards. Yes, next, please. Yes, and getting the benefits from the city models, 
we see that, that there are many levels of, of, of that. So, of course, you have the data there and, and you have the virtual world and combining those that data with the virtual worlds, especially in the city GML semantic model, you get the uh, innovation and, and service platform and, 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 and that you need to getting the benefits. The, I think the first level is, is uh, integrating that Treaty or city model, the digital twin technology to the processes, uh, internal processes of the city, so service processes, building processes, city planning processes, and 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 like that. So so in cities' own work, it's 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 also useful. But but as we have Helsinki, very good open data culture. It the, those platforms also serve as as a open innovation platform so we have the same city model and, and data service from the city servants as as we have to the whole world and it has been so so for uh, three years and and we 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 don't have any problems with with that of course there are certain da data that it's not open you understand and it's critical or, or something like that but 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 most of the data is open data and and, and it's 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 for the open innovation it's it's for the open cooperation with with, with uh, universities and other cities of the world and on, on whatever and then i think the highest level of, of getting getting the benefits from from the digital twin technology is, is supporting the ecosystems of the city or or city's strategic goals Let, let's say that in helsinki it, it's it's carbon neutral helsinki till 2035 or 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 some kind of supporting social networks supporting innovative networks, innovation networks and, and, and things like that. And you can also support those things uh, with, with, with city models. But, but, but I think it, it's advanced work, but in, in that way. But even in, uh, integrating those two processes, you, you can get huge savings. In industry, they say that it, it's about at, at least 10 or 15 percent savings of the whole whole production chain, and and if you think you can save about 15 percent of the whole big uh, process of, of ur urban planning or urban development, it's it's huge money. It it, it certainly is, and and in, in in that way, my old dreams 40 years ago will will come true very near. Yes, next one. Yes, and, and, and there, there are also the text, text part and you can read this, this later and, and, and yes, we go to the next one. One practical use case in Helsinki, it's, it's for the strategic goal to be carbon neutral 2035. And, and this is what we have done in, in my, my 3D team for, for supporting that goal. We, we made this Helsinki Energy and Climate Atlas. You see the address there, you can go there. It, it's, it's open for everybody. And, 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 and that's, that's explaining what's the situation now in Helsinki and, 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 and what alternative energy sources you can use in Helsinki. So it, it has now four parts. There's the energy data, every building, building year, renovation, volume and, and, and energy cons consumption as far as we have that. that that's the basic thing and, and there, there are all, all, over 30, 30 thematic uh, um, uh, models of that uh, all, all in, in, in different attributes. Then we have the solar energy potential analysis. Every building, every surface, so there's one million surface in, in Helsinki buildings and you can click whatever surface there and, and you, you see the, the solar energy that com, comes from them every month and, and every year and so. It, it's very accurate and, and, and and this also works on every device. You can go there with your smartphone phone and, and, and check, check the potential there. And, and what's, what is coming, so it's, it's ready, the heat demand is, is ready. 
it, it's going to be launched in October. We have done it now, and and it, it's about uh, simulation of um, energy renovations needed uh, for for houses to be carbon neutral and 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 uh, according to the climate change and, and, and such things. It's, it was a huge work. It, it was done in cooperation with the Technical University of Stuttgart. One thesis work, excellent work there. And, and, and now, now the service is almost ready. And then we have also the geothermal potential. So one alternative energy source and, and, and geothermal energy is very promising. And, and, and very widely used also in Helsinki and, and you can check there what's the potential under your house and, and in, in your area. And then, then in next slide we see a little bit more about that heat demand services. It, it, it has very many attributes and, and it, yes it's going to be launched in October and, and this is uh, I, I think this is wonderful uh, and this is for for every house owner in, in Helsinki to check, check about the situation there and this is also for companies who want to sell energy saving solutions for, for the for the for the real estate owners this was a huge project and 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 most of, more than half of the work was was preparing the data and, and preparing to do the analysis, to do the simulations, and, and, and so it was a huge work. So I, I can't emphasize too much about, about the, the meaning of the data quality and, and, and the data behind these services. Without the data, you can't do this, this kind of work. And, and also doing these analysis, you, you see the mistakes in, in the data. There are results that, that come that this can't be possible. It, it, it's impossible like that. So, so you find also the mistakes in the data. Yes. And, and in the end, I, I like to say that, that, um, that it, it's, it's not only dancing on the roses <laughs> with these city models. We also have made mistakes and, and, and all, all projects are, are not so successful. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. You get also good results when you try hard enough. Thank you. Thank you, Jarno. Uh, if I may. Thank you very much. Yes. So before we continue, I think is the time for a new polling. Is it right? Exactly. Exactly. Thank okay. you. Uh, so let's go for next polling. So the question would be how familiar are you with the concept that location intelligence contributes to innovation in the area of quality of life in cities and regions? So please take a vote. So we'll end the polling and sharing the results. It's quite distributed, the answer here. So somewhere in the middle, knowing the basics and I, you've heard about it, but do not know it very well. Okay, so uh, stopping sharing the results. Uh, we are inviting now, I think, Ricardo Vittorino to present us the next case study. Please, Ricardo. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me well. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, um, Clementine and, and Ray, for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be speaking today here in this interesting session, especially uh, in co collaboration with the city of Helsinki, which is such a reference in the, the smart city domain, which is a topic where I focus at Ubiware. So I'm the smart cities research and innovation manager at a Portuguese small medium enterprise focused on software development. And within smart cities, um, we have been focusing on a flagship product called the Urban Platform, which tries to solve the issues of digitalization and tries to solve some of the trends that Gartner has just shown us uh, that are that will be a hype within two years, up to ten years, and some of them it's it are exactly what we are trying to to achieve uh, and already validating with cities like Guimarães in the north of Portugal, which I encourage you to. Uh, visit as soon as possible, even uh, with the restrictions that the pandemic is causing us. Uh, so essentially, 
when we look at a city and after seeing Jarno's presentation of all the different data sets that uh, can help monitor and help uh, assess the performance of the different services and the different infrastructure providers, uh, it could be uh, quite a challenge if we had to use different applications and different interfaces to interact with all of them uh, because the traffic congestion might be caused by the lack of parking uh, and the pollution or the noise might be caused by that traffic and all these correlations if we use different uh, silos or different uh, applications it becomes quite uh, a burden for a city manager to assess what's happening. Uh, that's why we, we developed the urban platform to break these silos and to leverage on open standards to bring all this information together uh, and to support the cities to become more sustainable. So to reach the sustainable development goals, to ma map, uh, uh, reach the KPIs that the United Nations and uh, uh, the International Standards Organization have defined uh, so that cities can benchmark themselves. And today um, we can propose cities like Kimaranj if they can actually imagine their city as a single integration integrated system. And that's exactly what the urban platform uh, provides. So they can have in a, a control room or in their home office uh, access to what's happening out in the street in real time, uh, leveraging data from different sources, different providers, and all thanks to uh, open standards and data harmonization. And I'll go through some of the features and value propositions. So regarding the location intelligence and uh, thinking of this uh, uh, as some of the, the trends that Gartner has just explained, uh, we can provide uh, cross-domain analysis. So we are not just getting data from one place to another. We are actually uh, analyzing and correlating it. And this has an impact and uh, requires a lot of data sources, uh, not just the new or more recent uh, dynamic data sources like the IoT devices, uh, the, the mobile applications and uh, mobile sources of information that are now more connected and requiring uh, more computing power and providing more information to uh, different industry players and also the, the digital governments that acquire them, uh, but also some more old or more uh, static information like the uh, geographic information mapping that cities have in their own geographic information systems, mapping tools, and that can be uh, complemented and can be enriched with real-time data that comes in from different sources. So here we can help the city analyze uh, in real time what's happening uh, in their own urban environment, trying to link uh, the different data sources and, and see the impact or for example for example uh, the organization of a large event uh, within the traffic uh, conditions um, and and also on the noise and and the waste produced during that event uh, and support the decisions and the operations of the waste collection traffic management uh, in, in fact to improve all those use cases to improve the quality of life of people who live and work and visit those cities so that's the ultimate uh, goal. And since this involves quite a, quite a lot of stakeholders, even within the city council staff, and bear in mind that all these animated GIFs that I hope you are seeing uh, properly are all examples of the urban platform running in Guimarães. So all of that data uh, is being collected and being used by the city staff. Um, and uh, basically they can filter and, and, and define what they want to see uh, in, in real time. If they want to see the buildings in 2D or 3D, if they want to focus on the mobility or more on the environmental and get that on the map uh, filtered out or, or, or hidden or grouped per administrative division, uh, but also on the sidebar where you get some real-time analytics and real-time indicators and assessment if it's, if it's something uh, beyond the average or something uh, out of out of the typical patterns uh, of the city um, and while while this is a trend and while this is a, a, a quite popular and if you search for smart cities uh, cities do not need to feel the pressure of having all this data uh, available digitally so even with Kimaranj the process was was quite quite uh, impressive for us because we we did the co-creation together with them we started with uh, we started small with uh, only a few data sets about traffic flow, uh, weather and air quality, some charging stations and, and the incidents report that they already collect from the community. Uh, and then we are incrementing with more and more uh, uh, data sets and this replicability and this scale up of the solution is, is mostly powered by uh, open standards. But this gives us a view that they already have some tools in place 
uh, some of the data are now coming up, uh, some of them provided by, by us, some of them provided by third party uh, providers, and uh, it's all possible to integrate in the urban platform uh, thanks to its uh, success factors of having an interoperable software architecture uh, that complies with different open standards. So here you can have more or less a, a, the scope of, um, of what we can uh, compile, what we can bring in and how we can customize the different uh, views and the different screens uh, to the city needs. Uh, so amongst all the data sets that we can collect, we, we, sh we, we need to focus on the city priorities because cities are struggling with the same uh, issues, with the same challenges, but at different scales or at, with different priorities. And, and here we can support them on that decision process. Uh, but that is only possible if we can really provide data harmonization because traffic flow can come from multiple sources, can come from a CCTV camera that city implements, can come from sensors, from third party providers like Google, here, TomTom, Tom, or uh, uh, whoever is digitalizing that information, can come from the traffic authority. So you can have different sources mapping the same information about the location and about the distribution of resources within a city. If we don't harmonize this information to, be, to support the correlation, it becomes a different challenge. So it's not just the open standards and the interoperability to collect that data in a standard common way, but also then using the different uh, data sources to harmonize the information so it's understandable and correlatable between the different uh, providers. Um, and then, of course, we have the local data sources that the city is capable and responsible to collect and assess amongst its own ecosystem. So we, when doing procurement process, uh, when acquiring uh, digital tools and technology, but there's also global sources, you know, there's the Galileo satellite collecting information uh, about the buildings and energy production. There are uh, uh, public and, and global uh, weather monitoring conditions. There are points of interest and parking data and uh, a lot of information available openly uh, that is used, currently used by the navigation systems you have on your own cars or on your uh, mobile apps. Uh, so most of this information is global and can be complemented with the ones that the city has uh, locally. So it, they, we, do, we don't need to start from scratch with every city. We didn't do it with the city of Guimarães. We sat, sat down with them and understood what was out there. And then we go through the process as, as we grow, both in terms of uh, an industry player and also with, uh, with the city council. Uh, and this essentially allows them to not only have uh, beautifully graphed maps with uh, all the information they can hide out, the communication channels with, it, with the community, gathering their feedback on problems and, uh, uh, and, and, and activities done in the city. Uh, they can have customizable dashboards where they see different charts, but all in all, they want to see if they can reach the sustainable development goals by 2030, and we are supporting them assessing that. So we have standard KPIs that were defined by ISO, uh, so 37120 and 37122, those are the two major lists of KPIs for sustainable uh, smart cities. Uh, and we also tailor make uh, the view so that the city can also benchmark itself in terms of demography, in terms of their uh, own uh, uh, community and how they evolve. So they don't, do not need just to use the, the standard KPIs, but they can also see how they are growing up. Uh, and this helps to take a feedback and a, a retrospective on how things were and assess what worked and what not. Um, and also compare with other cities, both in Portugal, but also in Europe and all over the world. So this provides us a tool that helps us map the different domains and data sources with the sustainable development goals all through a single digital system. Um, this is all I have to present today. Thank you so much. So I'll give the floor back to Clementine but I'm available to answer any questions during the panel or afterwards by email. Thank you so much. Yes, um, great stuff, uh, Yongo and Ricardo. Thanks so much for making this uh, very lively and very real. Um, I will put, put up now the slide on the conclusions. Um, if we can move, yes, thank you. So I think what, what is really interesting here and, and bringing back uh, this discussion to the definition that Gartner proposes for location intelligence, and the notion of insight. Um, what we want to highlight, of course, is that there is uh, innovation, uh, but only if there is added value. And these two uh, cases demonstrated through the illustration of the use cases, how much value can be generated. Um, 
and and how innovation can actually build on uh, let's say um, quality of life uh, and and other uh, improvement areas in digital government but we also heard that the challenges were high um, there was a lot of um, let's say uh, thresholds that uh, that still needs to uh, be overcome in terms of data quality in terms of uh, uh, let's say aligning the different data sources um, there is a very interesting question in the chat regarding uh, the integration of these platforms and, and if these integrations were actually made possible by a policy making process or if there was a change in policy. Um, to my understanding, there was no uh, strong, let's say, uh, governance behind this. There was a lot of, let's say, discussions and alignment for creating semantic models among the different interest groups that, uh, from what I heard in the digital twin of Helsinki, included uh, the academia, but um, also the open source uh, uh, providers of solutions. Um, and so, so basically, uh, a huge alignment necessary by the different uh, ecosystem partners in these in these different platforms. Um, regarding uh, the challenges, I think what we want to highlight here, of course, is the importance of the interoperability of these different types of, of data. Um, and um, from what we've heard uh, in the digital twins and urban platforms, not because you have a semantic city model that you already have interoperability across these platforms, and in this sense, I think this is very interesting to propose these cases in the scope of an Elise webinar because we understand, of course, that there is therefore still a policy role to play. And uh, the conclusions of these um, initiatives uh, will help us uh, feed into the, uh, the future of these um, actions that support interoperability uh, based on location information across, uh, across Europe. Um, and therefore, I think, uh, yes, the, the role of standardization bodies and these initiatives um, is to create these healthy data ecosystems, which will then accelerate the impact of innovation uh, through uh, user and citizen value. This is uh, where I would like to stop my key takeaways for today. Um, and then I would like to, let's say at this point, either put up a poll, I'm not sure if there's one now, um, but at least open to the quality, the uh, question and answer session. Yes, so the question for the poll, thank you, Simon, um, built on the uh, conclusions uh, of, of, of the slide that we have been uh, looking at. EU initiatives on digital government or data strategies should provide more support in sharing knowledge in the area of location intelligence innovation which actually supports communities. So smart cities, smart regions, et cetera. What is your opinion on this? We'd be happy to hear. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Or maybe you don't really have an opinion and that's also fine. Okay, so um, there is a strong role for uh, these EU initiatives, such as this Elise uh, action, and this is this is great news because I think I think that a lot has been done so far, um, and we also managed to build on concrete cases and and, and existing feedback from the field to uh, let's say to align or or steer our actions in the future. Um, this Elise action also takes into account a lot of national. Um, um, initiatives uh, regarding uh, location information and, and I think that this uh, webinar will be also relevant for for their understanding of the uh, future of the let's say location information um, in uh, in Europe. Um, I will now leave the floor to any questions uh, from uh, the audience to Guillermo, Ricardo or myself. So I don't know, Clementine, if we should pick on the Colin's comment on, on the chat, um, but on our, on our perspective, for instance, even if we might not have yet uh, induced, um, as uh, encoding um, the radical, not radical, but uh, how was it? Um, 
uh, how did you mention immigration policy? Ah, uh, radical policy reforms. I think it's a, a nice tool that cities can uh, trial um, policies before implementing them in the long term. So uh, I can take the example um, and not taking any any, any uh, part of it, but. Uh, of banning diesel cars from city centers. I mean, um, this is a common thing that's happening all across the world. And I'm not saying that it's a, a, I agree or disagree, but just saying that cities can do that trial, for instance, for a couple of months, see the environmental impact that it has caused, get the feedback from the citizens community if they struggle because they own a diesel car and they don't have any opportunity to take other means of transportation or they don't find it usable and assess uh, how the city should respond to this community, just like we are assessing your opinions here on the poll. So uh, basically using data to prove if, if it really caused a positive impact on quality of life and if the community is happy and then move forward with that. This might, might be a terrible example, but it's something that at least is quite common nowadays and that we can help assess with data and location intelligence uh, as, as showcased today. Yes, a very good point. And I think it's uh, very relevant to highlight that this near real-time data is extremely important, especially in the management of the pandemic today. And so the future of smart cities and smart regions will also include some, let's say, of, um, management of health data that will be included. Um, and, that, and to be honest, my understanding is that it doesn't necessarily justify previous policies, but it can also make sure that you can adapt policies to better reflect the current situation in a more agile way. I, I, I have my own dreams as well, Yarmo, I dream of Agile policy making based yeah. on uh, data driven government. Yeah, I like to say a few words about the process integration because I understand there's some comments about that. I know best the city planning process, which is in Finland or, or any, anywhere. It, it, it's very complicated because it, it's, it's a planning process in, in, in very many circles with, with lots of alternatives. It, it's also a communication process with, with, the, with, the, with the citizens, building the understanding about the alternatives and, and, and building the common opinion of what's happening there. It's also a decision-making process. And after that, it, it, it's also a, a, a communication process, what, what's happening in the city in the future. And, and it, it's also an economical process, how to finance and, and, and then the building process and so. So, so it, it, it's a, it's a huge bunch of, of, of integrated processes and, 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 and the, the process integration means that, that if, if you do and, and you, you can use the digital twin during the whole process, you, you get, get the real benefits. In Helsinki, we have now a wonderful this strategic decision that, that from the beginning of next year, we are presenting every plan, every new project on, on a city model to, to the city planning council and then to the political decision makers and to the mayors and to the people. And, and, and so, so we, we want to be very open in these processes and, and build the understanding what's happening, what, what is going to be decided and what has decided now. And, and, and so, and, and, and that, 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 that's, that's one, but I, I think it, it's a huge benefit if you can get all that. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great. That, that's um, the next question from Colin is about um, do you think what do you think could be the ways to include more citizens and companies in location intelligence ecosystem? I mean, I think this is extremely relevant in the sense that um, currently uh, a lot of the uh, these platforms um, are are using data, of course, from uh, let's say from from buildings from. Uh, uh, from governments, but we 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 do um, see the added value of, of having these data sources expand towards the private sector as well, um, and and there's quite a lot of initiatives that include this. But the standardization activities would need to be extended, uh, and there needs to be more uptake. I think this is also part of where Elise would like to focus on in the coming uh, in the coming years. Um, Simon, there's a question you would like to raise, perhaps? Yes, I just wrote it down. So, <clears throat> question for Yarmo, maybe if uh, you're maybe undertaking any activities that would connect different models cross-border, and if yes, uh, what are your, let's say, 
experiences, first experiences on that? Uh, oh, connect different models cross border. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yes, I understand that, that cross border is, is something that that putting different models together and and and, and building it like like that. So, so it's it, of course it, it's it's possible and and but, but there are certain difficult difficulties to to combining different models because the the accuracy is 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 a little bit different so so at this point in in our services it it is like that 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 we 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 want we want and and we guarantee the quality and the accuracy of of of, of the of the models and and like that but i think in, in the future as we have the, the those two production lines that they, they will join after 10 years i, I think we don't have those Two production lines. There's only one 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 production line, and, and, and there's need need for 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 those two. Is this maybe this is something for the help? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Officially, we have uh, reached uh, three o'clock. Uh, at least in my time zone. I think we have to close this webinar. But I would really like to thank everybody for attending and also participating in the discussion um, and then we will uh, make sure we will see you again in the uh, in the next events that Simone is actually presenting on the screen so uh, thanks a lot and uh, take care everyone bye bye yes thank you everyone bye bye take care stay safe bye bye